All right, so today we're gonna talk about our power situation and how that's been going while we are building our bus out at the shop here, which has no power. So we've been solely relying on our bus to power everything we need uh, to build the bus as well as keep it comfortable inside for our kids. And so the way we do that is we have 3,500 watts of solar on the roof of our bus on a retractable frame. If you're not familiar with our build, it's a fairly large build. We generally come to the bus around 8.30 or 9, stay for the whole day until about 5.30 or 6. And so fortunately during that time, we've got sun and it's bright and we're in Arizona. So there is more than likely very, very plentiful sun. And so um, we thought with as much solar as we have and as large of a battery as we have, that we would be able to keep up even when it's, you know, very, very hot. And so what we didn't account for is as the heat rises, um, say we get past 105, 110, 115 degrees, what happens is we can't get the full amount of solar that we have because the heat um, in the solar panels doesn't allow them to produce their full potential of solar. So out of a 3,500 watt system, we'll maybe get 2,900 watts or 3,000 watts when it's really hot like that. And so as a result, our calculations were a little bit off and we haven't really been able to keep up. And um, that's kind of a half truth. We've been able to keep up for about three days and sometimes into a fourth day before we start kind of seeing that the battery is starting to deplete. So the way our system works is we have everything plugged in, everything runs all the time through our battery and our solar. And that includes refrigerators, a security system, um, some converters, the inverters always running. And so during the night, on a typical night, we will usually lose about 10% of our battery capacity due to those draws, the, all the stuff that's running. So when the sun comes back up, um, normally by about nine or 10 o'clock, that 10% is all made up and it floats throughout the rest of the day. And those are days when we're not here. Now when we're here, eight or nine comes around and we start rolling in and we deploy all the panels, we turn on all the air conditioners, start powering saws and welders and drill presses and all the tools we need to build the bus. Um, and what happens is, is at the end of the day, we're not at, a, you know, we're not at 100% again. So um, we lose about 10% during the day. And so 10 or 15%. So at the end of the day, we may be at 85% or we may be at 80% or something like that. And so what happens is overnight we lose the 10%. And so now by the time the next day comes around, you know, we're down to about 70% or 75% or something like that. And that tends to, you know, when that happens day after day, we're running on a deficiency. And so what you would normally do in a normal situation is maybe run a generator for a few hours to just kind of catch you up, get you back to where you need to be. Um, and we could have certainly done that, but about maybe six months ago or so, um, we saw that there's a very cool solar place near our home called Santan Solar. We saw that they had our exact model of solar panels, which are quite rare. We've only been able to see them for sale a few times. They're 435 watts each. And so when we saw that they had some, we just went and bought a couple as spares in case something were to ever happen to the ones that are on our roof. So we bought two more just to keep at our house in case something ever happens. So now what we're gonna try to do is instead of buying a generator, we went out and bought some cable and a few splitters and a fuse. And what we're gonna try to do is set these out kind of as a ground deploy to see, well, if we add an additional four or 870 watts, would that be enough then to get us back to the way we were running during spring and early summer where we were able to keep up with no problem? So we do run three air conditioners in the bus. We have a one ton mini split and we have two uh, 5,000 BTU window units, one that powers the rear of the bus and another one that cools down 
the, uh, the bay where all the batteries and the inverter and things like that are. And so we figured rather than get a generator, let's try to see if these ground deploy panels will make up the difference and allow us to just keep running the way we were running before. So the reason we're not doing this permanently is when we're not in 105 degree weather, we should be able to keep up fine with the system we have. And so this is just a kind of an experiment for will this be enough? And it'll also be an experiment for if we get a generator, if can we get by with a small generator, if, if there's cloudy days and things like that, this will work a little bit like a small generator. So anyway, that's the experiment for today. So we went to Santan Solar and we bought 50 feet of cable. Um, this is a fuse for the panels and then just some splitters. And so we're gonna run the cable today, get those things ground deployed, and see what it does for our power situation. This weekend is gonna be very hot. I think we're at something around 107 to 110 for this weekend. And so it'll be a good experiment to see if we can keep up like we were before. All right, so this is a view of our sort of our command center for our power stuff. So we can see it's about 11.52, so we're pretty near peak for solar power for our area. We're in Arizona. We can see that we're bringing in 2,750 or so watts of power. And just our air conditioners and um, computers and refrigerator, security cameras, all the things that are running inside are consuming about 2100 watts. And so right now we're running, you know, we're, we're charging the battery with about four amps. But as soon as we start running power tools or welders or vacuums or anything like that, the, the power usage increases significantly and we start to lose power. So this morning we haven't been running a lot of power tools because we've been focused on this electrical project. So we can see we're still at 99% at 1153. And we got here this morning at about nine, about 915 or so. Um, so we can see that you know we've only lost one percent but as we start running power tools as the day gets hotter it's about 105 right now um, we will start losing more and more power and so that's the reason we're addressing this right now So we wanted to verify that these were working by themselves, and they are. We're getting about 776 watts just from those two panels. So the theoretical maximum is 870. So that's actually not too bad for as hot as it is. So I don't know if you can see that. All right, so we'll turn the other panels back on. All right, so we've connected those two panels up. 
we just kind of laid them on a little dirt hill outside and so we can see now that instead of you know 2700 or 2600 we're now getting 3400 out of a potential 4350 so anyway we're pretty happy with that um, the battery is charging as we can see here it's um, bringing in about 9 to 10 amps um, and our loads are about 2500 right now it's it's a full 105 right now. <laughs> so anyway, the way we connected them back here was we just threw these Ys in just for now. And this is just temporary, so we didn't worry about making it really pretty or anything like that. The wire, again, is just a temporary thing. It's just going there. And so, um, yeah, so we'll keep an eye on this. Hopefully this will go ahead and get us to the way we were running in the spring and early summer where we were able to just keep up all the time. Um, we're hoping that's the case. If this works out well, maybe we'll build just a small little um, stand so that the panels aren't just laying in the dirt so they're actually up and we can tilt them at the optimal you know, angle for the time of year. But anyway, they look like they're doing pretty good. So we will report back at the end of this weekend. So today's our first weekend day working and we'll work four days through. So right now, we are getting a real good charge on our battery. We're getting about 17, 18 amps in. It says it'll be fully, our BMS is telling us it'll be fully charged in about an hour. And so if we can do that and keep it fully charged, um, that'll, that'll be a good thing. So we'll report back at the end of the four days and see how we did. So as a comparison, last week at the end of four days, we were basically almost flat zero. So we were, we've used, we had used up almost all of our battery. So we'll see how this week goes. All right, so it's the end of our four day work week um, with this new solar, this augmented solar setup. And so it was extremely hot this week. So it was 105 to 107 every day, um, sunny with a little bit of wind, but just hot. So it's been really hot. We've been running a ton of power tools. We've bought a, another shop vac and we've been vacuuming all over the place with a six horsepower shop vac. We did um, a little bit of welding. We did a lot of cutting with a uh, two horsepower table saw. And so we've been running a lot of power tools. Um, all the air conditioners, of course, have been cranked up as hard as they can run. So what we were hoping for is that adding these two panels in this extreme heat using all the power tools and everything would get us back to what we were seeing like in the spring where during the day that solar would just take care of everything that's running and then so overnight we can go ahead and lose that 10 percent that we normally lose due to refrigerators running and security systems and all the things that are running inside the bus and so by about 10 o'clock the next day, we're back up to full power and we can run everything as normal. So that has happened and we'll put up a couple graphs to show, you know, a hot weekend where we just had the 3,500 watts that we normally have. And then this weekend, which was also hot and um, you can see the differences there. So we'll go ahead and put those up so you can check them out, but we're going to go ahead and call that a success. Now, with the huge caveat that when we're traveling, our 3,500 watts should be more than enough. We don't plan to make this augmented system a permanent thing. It was just sort of an experiment to see out here in the extreme heat while we're running, um, can we do it without a generator and just use the two panels that we already have? And I think this weekend has answered that yes, we can. Um, and so the next step now is to make a nicer right now we just kind of have them on this little dirt hill we have the panels just laid down on this dirt hill so the next step is to make a nice little kind of stand form that we can stake down and screw the panels into a little bit make it a little more secure and um and just run the power that way but we're going to call it a success for now